Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education and today we are going to look into the last part of the chapter Political Parties and this will be the third part and the last lecture of this chapter part of the class 10th Civics portion essay 2 in which we are going to study the last two portions that is challenges to political parties and we are going to study the reforms to political parties. So these two parts uh, what we are going to cover in this lecture, these two things are going to be the part of the agenda of this lecture. So let's move forth and start without further ado. So first is the challenges to political parties. So till now we have studied the different kinds of political parties. We have looked at some parties in a lot of detail. But now we need to understand that all political parties face certain challenges, right? And these challenges actually hinder them from becoming truly democratic. So basically, these are the challenges which prevent them from becoming a true democratic institution. So what are these challenges? Let us see. The first challenge is the lack of internal democracy. Basically, within parties, there are some people who hold high power, mainly the top notch leaders of the party. And it also involves the karyakartas, the small workers, the small members of the party. So basically, in many parties, there is a lack of a proper democratic system because power is concentrated only among a few top leaders. But uh, the power in the party is concentrated within some groups only, within only a few leaders. And their control is so strong that the other members of the party, the smaller workers, the spokespersons, the smaller members of the party, the junior members of the party, sometimes they are not able to rise to the top. Right? They also want to become top members of the party, but they are not able to do so because of the concentration of power only in a few top leaders of the party and no proper internal democratic setup. And because of the influence of very strong leaders, sometimes there is a decrease of democratic setup within a political party. So again, since there is strong control and power of the top leaders, because of that, they don't allow other members of the party to grow to the top. And hence, this leads to a reduction of democratic setup. Right. So this is the first main challenge of a challenge to a political party. The second challenge that we have is the lack is the dynastic succession. Now, as this word suggests, can you think of what it suggests? Dynastic succession. That is the succession of a dynasty. One particular dynasty continuously succeeding. So in one way, it mainly means, it basically means that one particular family controls the affairs of a particular party. So in in some parties, power and control is concentrated primarily in the hands of one family. So when there is one family which is controlling the, 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 the affairs of the party, controlling the uh, strategy of the party, controlling the methods of the party, controlling the elections, the basic uh, working of the party, then we say that it is suffering from dynastic succession. And tickets are distributed giving preference to only that particular family. So, for example, we have some person A and we have some person B. A is part of the dynastic family of that party. B is a normal person of that party. So, who will be given preference? A will be given preference in getting tickets. Right? Because A is part of the dynastic family of the party. The family leads the party's affairs and usually holds control over its functioning. This prevents other workers from rising to positions of power within the party or even getting a chance to contest elections or chance to, uh, you know, express their views within the party. So again, this is the problem of dynastic succession. Now, I know if you look into this word, those who are a little bit politically aware, I know <laughs> they'll be thinking of one particular party, but I'll not name that party. But again, challenges to political parties, this is one very big challenge to political parties. Okay, in many parties, this problem is present, right? So these two are the first two we're going to discuss. Now we come to the third problem of political parties, that is money and muscle power. If you have money, if you have power, well, if you have gundas, you have goons with you, well, you are the most powerful person in the party. So basically, this is the problem that parties often give tickets to people with criminal records. So again, sometimes if you see, not sometimes, many times if you see many parties will give tickets to people with criminal records, criminal cases, yet they are given tickets. And these gundas, these criminal candidates, they use their money and influence 
to influence the voting process so sometimes they can do rigging sometimes they can you know slow down the voting process they can um, urge people they can threaten voters to vote for that particular party and for that particular candidate so again because of the use of these things this makes elections very very undemocratic and very very unhealthy and it is a very unhealthy challenge for a democracy one of the biggest 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 problems after dynastic succession this is the biggest problem that our parties face very very big problem right because we hire gundas and gurlums and goons for our parties as candidates and this leads to problems right so money and muscle power and the last challenge we are going to look at is the lack of meaningful choice now what does this mean basically now you know that political parties they offer choice to voters right that's one very big advantage of political parties that there is political choice to voters however in the recent years the political parties across the world in many countries they have become very very similar in their ideology and policies so if we have party 1 and if we have party 2 although during their foundation they were very very different parties but gradually as you see like if you have come to the present time then party 1 and party 2 they are almost similar almost similar because their policies have become similar the policies have become similar so again this is a problem that because of this and why is this a problem because of this voters are unable to look for a meaningful choice and it has reduced the variety of choice that voters have to elect leaders because now every party is the same they begin to develop this notion that every party is the same everyone is the same they are all the same thing and there's no point in voting because they are all the same right and a clear example of this is the labor and conservative party in the united kingdom these are the two major parties in the united kingdom and today they they are very very similar in their economic approach in their social approach their policies are very very similar so again this is another big problem because it has reduced the meaningful choice that is available to voters okay so these are the four important challenges to political parties please be clear with them if you have any kind of doubt please post it in the comment section below and i'll clear your doubt accordingly right so i hope challenges to democracy sorry challenges to political parties are absolutely clear right so we are now going to move on to the reforms now there were some previous attempts to reform political parties so we are going to first look at the previous attempts that have been taken to reform political parties okay the previous attempts the first attempt was the anti defection law which was through an amendment in the constitution amendment in the constitution so basically what happened i'll tell you basically it was seen that earlier constitution so what did people earlier do people mps and mlas in the greed for power as ministers or in the greed for money they would often change their party so they are mlas and mps of one party so for example they are the MLA, mlas and mps of congress because of money or because of some problem because of them being pulled because of money and the greed for being ministers they would change to another party suppose bjp so they are changing their party this change of parties okay this change of parties by a sitting mla or mp is what we call defection and the constitution was amended to prevent defection and what it what what happened basically it was made uh, a law was made which said that if an if a sitting mp or mla sitting which is at this point currently an mp or mla a sitting mp or mla changes his party then he or she will lose his seat he or she will lose his or her seat in the parliament or in the legislative assembly so loss of seat in case of defection so if you uh, perform defection if you changed your party as a sitting mp or mla you would lose your seat Okay, so this was the anti-defection law. It was taken to reform political parties so that these MLAs and MPs stop their uh, defection uh, practices. Next was next uh, attempt is the affidavit compulsion by Supreme Court. Now today, in today's date, the Supreme Court has made it mandatory for all candidates who are contesting elections to submit an affidavit, right? And that affidavit must contain some basic uh, information about the 
a candidate it could it should contain the assets information about the assets of the candidate the property the money he or she owns assets of him uh, of candidate and relatives candidate and relatives and it should also contain any criminal cases pending against the candidate so information about assets of the candidate and affidavit on the criminal cases which are pending against the candidates okay so supreme court has made it mandatory and this all this data will be made public so that people can analyze the data and vote accordingly so again this was a reform which was carried out by supreme court and next was the election commission rule for internal elections that the ec has made it mandatory for parties to file income tax returns it has made it compulsory for parties to file their income tax returns and also to hold regular internal elections right so the election commission has made it mandatory that parties should file income tax returns and also uh, hold regular internal elections however still this is not very very strongly followed right so all these attempts have been taken they have been successful to some extent but to some extent they have been failed also because parties tend to manipulate these attempts also sometimes okay so these are the previous attempts which were taken okay now we are going to move on to the possible reforms what are the possible reforms that can be taken to reform a political party right which are the possible ones which have not yet been taken but they can be taken the first one is the law to regulate internal affairs of political parties a law should be made whether in parliament by the judiciary or by the election commission that should regulate the internal affairs of a political party it should make it mandatory for hold to hold elections and the political parties should file a particular um, affidavits to the election commission which should give information about their internal elections which should give information about uh, the income tax returns everything in the internal affair of a political party should be made uh, should be informed to the election commission so a law should be there to regulate the internal affairs of political parties which should include internal elections which should include internal democratic setups also right so that is your law to regulate internal affairs the next one is that a one third of the seats or one third of seats or tickets not seats exactly tickets one third of tickets should be distributed to women at least one third should be distributed to women this will encourage parties to uh, give tickets to women and hence it will increase it will result in an equitable distribution of tickets okay equitable distribution of tickets right so at least one third of the tickets should be distributed to women or some fixed amount also then state funding of elections elections should be funded by the state by the government the government should give money or uh, some other form of capital such as ink such as um, telephones etc these things should be given by the government to parties to contest their elections this will make sure that parties don't use excessive amount of money in their election campaigns okay so elections should be state funded the money should be given by government the next important reform which is not there in the textbook but it is a widely debated reform that is parties should be brought under the right to information now some of you may not know this but the right to information does not cover political parties you cannot file an rti for a political party to gain information about the affairs of, of about the affairs of a political party you cannot do that you can do rti applications only for government institutions so all parties should be brought under the right to information so that the people have the right to know about the affairs of a political party right that's a very very good reform although not there in your textbook but if they ask you uh, the reform for five marks then your book only has three and two very very vague reforms at the end so this fourth one is a very very good reform which you can write in your exam and also as politically aware citizens you should know about it and the last reform is that those people that have political knowledge uh, should join politics and bring reforms in parties internally so those that have political knowledge that are politically aware citizens that are educated citizens 
again important they need to be educated and politically aware and they have love for the country they have uh, the ability they have the energy to do something for the country they should join polit politics and bring reforms in parties internally change them internally and ultimately change the dirty political system of our country right so these are the five possible reforms that political parties can undertake right so i hope it's absolutely clear with this we are done with the chapter political parties i hope you understood this chapter everything is clear in this chapter if you still have any kind of doubt please post it in the comment section below do like and subscribe and uh, i wish you all the best for your board examinations thank you stay healthy stay smart and do keep studying bye bye